performer. Uh, he <clears throat> basically amazing wrestler, I should say. I shouldn't say performer. Uh, EC3 was talking about how you know he liked to win, how he liked to be a winner, and that when he won the world title, it felt really good. And he admitted that you know he just acted like a piece of you know piece of shiza or shit, as a lot of people would say. He just was not, you know, in the right state of mind, and, you know, he doesn't expect, he, I think he was saying that he didn't, doesn't expect the fans to forgive him, but, you know, he, he is, he was admitting, he was human, and he was admitting that when he was wrong, he was wrong, and then he turned his attention to Matt Hardy, and again, great promos where he talked about, you know, you threw everything at me, you threw your wife, you threw my bodyguard, you threw tables, ladders, and chairs, but I still kept coming back. It's ironic that the thing that kept me down was the thing that I fought for the most, and that was the world title. And I'm going to tell you right now that next week when we're in the UK, I'm going to be on you like, you know, your shadow. That He's going to be everywhere, he's going to be looking for you, and he is going to find you. So you can definitely tell they're going to have a rematch between EC3 and Mad Hardy in the very near future. I'm looking forward to it. I am hoping that EC3 gets the title back. Because right now, Matt Hardy as a heel, if he has a manager, he's okay. But I just don't think that Matt Hardy really needs the world title anymore. But I think that, you know, having EC3 as the babyface is going to really make things very interesting in TNA for the long run. Talking about the main event, which was Matt Hardy defending the world title against Kurt Angle in a eh, pretty good matchup to say the least, but it took everything that Matt Hardy had to beat Kurt Angle. Uh, Rebby Sky grabbed Kurt Angle on the leg as he was going up to the top turnbuckle. Matt Hardy hit a twist of fate on Kurt Angle from the top rope and pinned him 1-2-3 in the middle of the ring. So be sure to tune in to TNA Impact next week when they go to the UK and they feature Kurt Angle versus Drew Galloway 2. Drew Galloway picked up well, actually, no, Drew Galloway tapped out the last time that they faced off, but is that going to be the case next time around when they fight off against each other in the U.K.? So, we go from that. I was going to do it for the talk about pro wrestling. So, we're going to close the show with the rivalries that I think were the top ones for the years 2006 to 2008, and they all revolve around one person. And no, it is not Mr. John Cena. No, it does not revolve around John Cena, although he is actually a key factor in one of them. It actually revolves around WWE Hall of Famer Edge. These three years were the years of Edge because these made him a main event level superstar. And I will explain that right now. So back in 2006, it kicked off with New Year's Revolution and the Elimination Chamber. John Cena picked up a hard-fought victory, and honestly, it thought like the, mat, the night was over. But then Vince McMahon came out and said, please, you know, raise up the chamber. The night's not over yet. This individual is cashing in his Money in the Bank privilege that he won at WrestleMania. And Edge came out, shocked the world, hit two spears on John Cena, one, two, three, and won his very first WWE World WWE title. And this was the basically the first chapter for Edge because the the you know it, it was just everything that you could imagine happened to him and he was successful. He was most talked about. It was amazing. Like the night after he had the first ever live sex celebration and he would win the WWE title again later on in the year. He would screw John Cena out of the title at ECW One Night Stand. He would beat John Cena quite a few times. And he would actually main event a Unforgiven pay-per-view in his hometown in his signature matchup. And that was one of the coolest matches and one of the most talked about matches that you will have to see. It is available on the WWE Network. Be sure to check it out. Unforgiven 2006 definitely worth watching so and a lot of people might say well John Cena was still a part of the title picture but he was not exactly winning and this was also a year that John Cena really felt all of the anti you know Cena crowds he really felt all of the hatred that these fans had for him when it was whether it was the you know Hammerstein ballroom where they were just 
chanting so many of these vulgar and just really nasty things at him to Toronto, Canada, where they knew when he was going to win, and they were just not having any of it. It was the first time, I think, that I'd seen him win a title, and he was just booed completely out of the building. It was just one of the most surreal moments that you will ever, <coughs> excuse me, that you'll ever feel. So Edge and Cena definitely stole the year in 2006. Going into 2007, it was actually a tie between three guys. It's between Edge, Undertaker, and Batista. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, they only faced off against each other once. How they all, How does that work? Here's how I'll explain it. WrestleMania kicked off with Edge, not Edge, uh, Batista versus The Undertaker. Had a great matchup. That definitely should have been the main event. And they had a great series of matches at Backlash. The one match on SmackDown and Cage. And it ended with Edge uh, cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase that he won from Mr. Kennedy and becoming the world champion. And then from there, having Edge and Batista face off against each other in a great series of matches. And then having Edge, unfortunately, getting injured, which follows up with Batista basically winning the title in at Unforgiven that year. And then having the rematch between him and The Undertaker at Cyber Sunday. Finally having it all escalate into a triple threat match at Armageddon. Everything that worked with this feuds, with these feuds, were just, they were just phenomenal, honestly. I mean, they, it really sucked that they got, that, you know, they got injured when they did. But at the same time, it just somehow just seemed to fit. It just seemed like everything worked. Because you had, you know, basically, and a tremendous win with The Undertaker winning against Batista. You had <clears throat> Edge winning the world title against The Undertaker, giving him his biggest, you know, victory to date. Um, you had Batista winning the world title back after being, you know, shamelessly, you know, almost taken out of the title picture for a while. And then having the rematches with him and Taker, having Edge get involved in the mix and having that great triple threat match at Armageddon, which Edge won. It worked just great, honestly, in my opinion, which goes into 2008. And in my opinion, the best feud of that year was indeed Edge versus The Undertaker. Again, great story that was told. Undertaker won the Elimination Chamber matchup at the No Way Out pay-per-view. Edge was the heel champion going into WrestleMania. And he apparently had a pin, another set another pinfall victory over The Undertaker. I think it was a three-on-four-on-one handicap match or something like that, and Edge hit a spear on Taker for the 1-2-3, but this time at WrestleMania, Undertaker, you know, got hit with the spear, but then he locked in the Hell's Gate, which eventually got banned, and Undertaker just kept getting screwed time and time again, and got banished by Vicky Guerrero, who was the SmackDown GM at the time. She, uh, but yeah, she banned the Undertaker. Undertaker wasn't seen again until the Hell in the Cell matchup at that year's SummerSlam, which, again, was just tremendous matchup. And at the end, you also got to see, you know, Edge basically getting, quote-unquote, sent to hell, which was one of those moments that really just sends, you know, a chill up your spine where it's just like, wow, this is just amazing, just seeing how... <clears throat> you see how that just completely unfolds and seeing how these guys just, you know, really tell a story. So Edge was definitely the guy that really made these three years just so memorable and made it so, you know, great and proud to be a wrestling fan. So looking forward to seeing how things go with the, um, that with the years that go by, you, trust me guys, the rivalries do get indeed better from 2008, but I think that those three years there were the years of Edge, so thank you, Edge, for all of those years of entertainment. Well, unfortunately, that is going to wrap it up for Pro Talk Wrestling this week. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Pro Talk Wrestling. Be sure to like us on Facebook at Pro Talk Wrestling with Nate the Great. Uh, be sure to check out, like I said, AJ's Belts for great deals on belts, and for a limited time, you get to 
you get the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt for $199.99 with free shipping, only available at the in the United States, unfortunately. Just email them, let them know about Pro Talk Wrestling, and they will do the rest. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Pro Talk Wrestling. We will catch you again next week. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Respect, cause ain't nobody breaking this redneck